people often ask us what the most important factors are in regards to nutrition. Look, number one is calories. Number two is macros. And then there's other things you want to consider. This one is one of the most important. If you eat meat, eat grass-fed meat. Literally switching your meat from grain-fed to grass-fed will automatically lower your calories and increase your omega-3 fatty acids by, in many cases, by three times. This makes a big difference when it comes to your health. So remember, calories first, then macros. And then if you need to pick something else, grass-fed meat. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That'll get some people uh, it will commenting. Be yeah, because then, you know, what do people always ask us? Like, what, what should I do about organic or, or, or non-GMO or, you know, this and that? And when you really look at, like, everything in context, you know, I, I thought a lot about this. And if you simply, like, to give you an example, 100 grams of uh, grain-fed meat versus 100 grams of grass-fed meat, there's like a 60, and that's not, you know, you're talking about 200 calories or 270 calories. That's a 70 calorie difference in a small piece. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you'd automatically lower your calories and grass-fed beef has, in many cases, tripled the omega-3s. And we've had Dr. Cabral now on the show a few times and he says how our fatty, I mean, that's how they test for inflammation yeah. and with his doctors is they test your ratio of omega-6 to omega-3s. And he says it makes a huge difference in people's health. So I'm like, this does a lot. Just this one switch you know, does a lot. I never thought about this, but we could, with a quick Google search, we could probably figure out what the uh, average pounds of meat, red meat, that the average person how many cons they say? Con consume a year. And then you could do the, uh, then you could do by weight what yeah, uh, like calories. Some total. You could. And then you could actually mathematically yeah. support. That's really what matters, right? It's the, the overall volume. You start to look at that. It's like my trend of eating red meat. And then if I was to optimize my red meat, like what that would do in terms of my overall health profile. Well, look, you could eat. You know, if you eat a a, a, a twelve ounce ribeye that's grain fed versus grass fed, same weight, one of them is less calories and has a better ratio of omega three fatty acids. It's also higher in, in some key nutrients. Not a huge difference, but like you said, Justin, enough over time. Like, yeah. Like okay, look, I that's eat, what I said in a year's time. Yeah. In a yeah, year's that time. Would be interesting. In a year's time, and you, you exactly. figure you're shaving thirty to hundred calories every single time you do that. Well, I mean, that's a lot. That's a, a lot when you think about it. especially when you think about the, the studies and the things that are out there that say like, oh, the average person puts on this much weight every single year. I was just going to so, say that. In fact, maybe Doug or, or, or Dylan can look this up. Like what, 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 how much weight does the average American gain per year? I think it's then you eight could, pounds. So if it's eight pounds. Yeah. So that's how I was, that's how I was trying to do. I was trying to reverse yeah. engineer that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Use, yeah. use that. Switching one variable out like that and like seeing like a six pound loss, mm. or, you know, whatever it is equates to would be interesting. So we've well, gotten really, in my house, we're really good. If, if I'm cooking me at home, uh, 90 plus percent of the time I'm using butcher box. If yeah. I'm out at a restaurant, I'm enjoying a regular steak. Right, Every now right. and then I'll have a grass fed one out to eat, but normally that's not the, even an option and I'm not really tripping about it. Mm. Yeah. But just a, most adults gain on average one to two pounds each year is what they oh, found wow. up there. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I've heard of the number of eight pounds as well, but yeah. just to one give to people, okay. it, it really doesn't matter because here's the con here's the point, right? Let's just say it was eight pounds. It, it's not, maybe it isn't, maybe it's more for some people, a lot less for others. That's why it averages out to one you know, to two pounds. But nonetheless, let's just say it is eight pounds in a whole year. And now this isn't exact, okay? But we know that a pound of body fat is about 3,500 calories. That's 28,000 extra calories a year, essentially, that made you gain that eight pounds. Divide that by 365, that's another 76 calories a day. So if you just ate, essentially, 76 more calories than you burned every single day, you would gain about eight pounds of body fat. Just 76. That's yeah. like three sips of a soda. Yeah. yeah. So now switching from grain fed to grass fed again calories and macros are most important show me people show me what can we look at like i would love to see a visual of like 12 ounces of grain fed versus grass fed beef and yeah. see what the actual uh, macro breakdown is yeah so i'm curious what that is yeah, and I, i'm sure it would depend on cut or whatever sure mm -hmm. but i mean you should be able to they should, there's got to be someone who's done a visual yeah, you can compare cut to cut too you could go yeah, ribeye yeah. to ribeye yeah, yeah, yeah. New, York, yeah. To, new york yeah i would imagine that the fattier cuts probably have a bigger difference than the than the yeah look at a ribeye yeah. it's probably yeah, one of the most popular steaks that, that most yeah. people would probably Purchase. That's what I eat the most of uh, when I eat a steak is the uh, is ribeye. I'm big on tri-tip, and then tri-tips yeah. very close. I think yeah. it's it's too. It's like it's local. It's our area. Do you know like that that whole Santa Maria tri-tip? Like, and you've been down like slow and down, and and it all originated from there. 
And like, Did I it? actually ate, yeah, down there. It originated had, there, not Texas? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was the a Santa Texas Maria tri tip, yeah. I did it's, not know it's that. A oh, thing. The, uh, that seasoning, the common. Yeah, it's, just, it's the seasoning, it's yeah, the yeah, type yeah, of yeah. beef, like, it's that whole thing. They, they raise the cows very specifically for that. So we use that, and then we use the other one that you showed me in Montreal, which everybody uses. Yeah, those uh, are the two. Uh, Montreal that we, seasoning. It's funny, we, we were up in, in Truckee, and Jessica made, you know, tri tip with it and everything. And my kids are eating it, and, you know, of course, my son's like, this is. Mama, you make the best food ever. My daughter's eating it. Mm, mm, and I'm like, it's the seasoning. They yeah. like the seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, it's, it, you know, you have to go in order of operation because uh, if you're just eating a crappy diet, macros are everywhere, calories are everywhere. <laughs> Oh, Switching to grass fed will make a difference. This. When I hear that. What does that say? That's, eight, that's just eight ounces, too. That's eight ounces of hamburger. So, calories for grass fed 432, wow. 568 for conventional, protein 43 versus 38. See, it's higher in protein, total it's lower fat in calories. 28 grams, 44 for wow. conventional. Look at that. Look what at the, great. look at that's a huge difference. Okay, 432 to 568. So, that's already 100. You're saying 70 something calories a day. That's already 150 yeah. calories. So 150 more calories, and it's five grams less of protein. No, less than that. No, no, no. yeah. Well, what how much was the protein? I can't read that. What does that say? Yes, uh, 43 oh, versus right. 38. I yeah. Thought say, I thought it said, yeah, so five more grams of protein. With 150 less calories. Less calories, and then compare saturated to monosaturated fat. Yeah, saturated 12 versus 16 <laughs> for the conventional. Yeah. And then uh, omega-3, 200 milligrams versus 108. Now look at CLA. So CLA, 0.72% versus 0.33%. Twice as much. CLA. So CLA is a fatty acid. If you ever want to look up interesting fatty acid study. In fact, CLA was sold as a fat it, loss. It supplement. was. It was, it you was guys remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. Okay. So if you were to take your fatty acid intake and you were to convert a significant percentage of it from whatever it is to CLA, people get leaner. This is one of those those arguments that people will use to say calorie is not a calorie. Hmm. Now, I a cal it is a calorie is not a calorie, but calories in versus calories out is still true. It's just some components cause more energy production or burn than others. CLA is probably one of them. You eat more CLA in your diet, even if the calories are the same you tend to get leaner. And again, it was sold. Now, it should not be a fat <laughs> fat loss supplement because just adding CLA is just adding calories to your diet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's not going to make you... <laughs> that was Math a common... work with that. Didn't you guys sell CLA? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was part of the uh, Ergogen's uh, stack, remember? Oh, God. It was, was, that? Uh, yeah. it was CLA. Uh -huh. What else was there? Lipotropic L transport. Methoxybolic. Oh, oh. oh. the lipotropic. Yeah, yeah. pyruvate. Yeah, pyruvate. Wow. Pyruvate, methoxybolic, lipotropic, yeah. transport, uh, CLA... Yeah. Am I missing Fat one? Fat burners. I think oh, that I, was it. That was the monster no, fat think, loss stack I used yeah. to sell. The lipotropics <laughs> were compounds no, that were help transport liver acids. from the lat from the liver into your bloodstream so you can then use it off as energy. <laughs> Still have the I still have, still have the, the pitch. You know, yeah. it's you know what they did uh, is they said, oh, here are the things that help your that take fatty acids from your liver to be used as energy. So yeah. if you just take more of these, just more, it just happens. That's not how it works. That's right? exactly. That's unfortunately, <laughs> they, same thing with pyruvate and CLA. They, they use those these things that were all that was true science in the body. Yeah, but yeah. but what we didn't have of it doesn't do exactly yeah. what we didn't have was the science. Of, I mean, uh, nitric oxide tested. is the same way too. Yeah. We made a lot of claims around uh, uh, nitric oxide products, and the the science is really weak on yeah. actually taking nitric nitric oxide as far as it actually in, in yeah. uh, changing it into your blood. It's funny because that's a very popular uh, sales thing in supplements that people don't, aren't aware of is that we take some true science of what's happening. And then we extrapolate more performance, fat right. loss, like or pro gain. pyruvate's released from the brain, right, and tells the body it's time to start metabolizing fat, right? That's something that that's part of the the Krebs cycle, right? And so the theory was oh if uh if pyruvate re re released from the brain signals the body then for you to metabolize fat if i just took pyruvate it would i'll burn more fat yeah i'll burn more uh, fat which th there's actually no science to support that, that actually hijacks that there might be some health benefits but you're right so so it's what a good point is they'll look at a a, a series of uh you know chemical reactions of the body they're involved with let's say muscle building or fat loss and they'll say cool if we add more of this, therefore. Yes. But no, what you need to see is a study that actually shows more muscle gain, more fat loss, better performance. Right. Not, From taking these supplements. That's right. right? Which, yeah. by the way, is really hard to even prove. 
That's why this yeah. is such a funny thing to talk about. And it's like so funny to me when I, you get these, these supplement companies or people that represent supplement companies and they try and use the science to argue their, their facts. Like, well, that science is very murky when yep. you talk about like the true proof of that supplement doing that. Yep. You can make the art, you can argue with me till you're blue in the face, what pyruvate does yeah. in the body and how that, what is that part of the system? Like, okay. And all these things that we already know, nitric oxide. Yes, I get yeah. what it does in the body, but there's not a lot of proof that you taking this compounds not like yeah you taking that. this is actually doing it any, any more than what the body would have already done by itself yeah right? and the, the the best studies speaking of nitric oxide right because that's a gas that's released in the in the system and it dilates your blood vessels right in increases or improves blood flow and so the thought was okay take these things that are converted to nitric oxide you'll get better pumps and everybody likes pumps you'll get better performance maybe more muscle growth whatever the best studies on that are on erectile dysfunction drugs because nothing boosts nitric oxide like Viagra or right. Cialis or yeah. whatever. <clears throat> and the studies on those show uh, there is a little bit of an improvement in athletic performance um, and some in a small improvement in muscle building. But those are pharmaceutical drugs that that really jack up nitric oxide. With other supplements, eh, it's perception. Do you feel more or not? Um, I do with some of them. If I drink more water with some of them, I think I notice, but I don't know. You yeah. know me, I'm sensitive to everything. So yeah. Yeah. it's usually just the caffeine in there or something else. Yeah. And then you get then you parse out the uh the the um psychological yeah, this the placebo effect too, right? Oh, because yeah. you believe oh, yeah. that it's working and it, and it's doing something it's, for you. So a there's a part effect. There's a part yeah, no, I mean the studies have shown how powerful that can be. So if you it's so powerful if they, you they believe it, it, there's especially a good, for certain people, yeah. Like yeah. it's funny how they screen that and then some people are like it's almost like at a 60% with some people. Dude, like very, my, high. very high. My yeah. favorite study on this that still to this day blows my mind is that, and I've talked about this on the show. I haven't talked about it for a long time, but I, I think about this study. It lives in my brain where they took people with, with arthritic knees. Oh, my God. With pain. Oh, I, I with pain constant pain. And they cut them open yeah some of them they cut open and stitched them Dude, up how like how mad would you be the other ones they cut open one of those guys <laughs> and did surgery they compared surgery to no surgery and yeah. the doctors literally said no no, no we got to fix this and here's the cartilage and here's what we're going to do and they had the same results yeah yeah. Because the placebo now people are like, gallivanting around like you had this like awesome procedure, you know, and like crazy. nothing, nothing, nothing even happened, nothing. And, you, and I've heard people, you know, spe speculate on why this was such a powerful placebo effect. Because when you're cut open, you think you had surgery. That's why. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course. Like, like you see that scar. Yeah. Well, like, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, how many Full times? Trust. How many? How many? Uh, do times do you think somebody has paid for an orthopedic surgeon to go in and clean things up? Yeah. I mean, how many times have you, have you ever heard of people? I mean, that happened oh, yeah. to me, right? If, oh, it's not, we can't do anything with it. Like they just left it the way it was because I had a partial tear. There was no reason to put a cadaver in there. So they go cut me all open. They go in there. Oh, we would clean up the scar tissue, do stuff like that. And I don't know, $30,000 bill later. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? They just made a nick. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just, what do you think they did? I don't think they did. I had the video. <laughs> I have the video. It's they a video. All they did was in there. jab around. So I was like, hell is sore afterwards. Like, so I was like hey, a week fucked hey, up. Just, <laughs> hey, I went they in. just diddled your knee. Hey, bro, that's all you <laughs> he diddle my knee. I was in no joke. Okay, real talk. Say so when I when I when I tore they wrote their initials on your feet. Listen, <laughs> listen. When I when I when I tore those. Okay, uh, happened in basketball. Guy falls on me. Okay, it was like ah, and then I limped Dr. off Neal the court, and then I'm off I'm off the court, and I and I'm like I'm I'm walking back and forth. I'm like okay, I'm gonna go back in. I tell the guys like I'm gonna go back in. Give me a minute. Let me walk this off. And the only reason why I didn't go back in was because every once in a while I would like something would feel like it missed. And I was like, okay, that doesn't feel right, you know? But I didn't feel a lot of pain. Worst feeling ever. Yeah. yeah. And the next day I wake up and it's like a balloon like yeah. this, right? But I was still not in crazy pain. It was painful, but not crazy yeah. pain. After the surgery where they did nothing but go and jab around, I was in the worst pain for like a week. That was the most painful time was after they cut me open and they jabbed around and cleaned up scar so tissue. So they looked at the MRI. Yeah. And they said we have to go in to see for ourselves. Yes, because it because it, you know because of all the inflammation, it was like not a hundred. Like we think. Wait a that, minute. So they so you so they cut me. Did open. They give you the option to wait for the inflammation to go down. No, do no. They literally cut me open, and they and it was I didn't know until Bro, I got scammed until I came to yeah. whether I was going to get a cadaver or not. Like so, they were ready to give me a cadaver, and but because it was still intact. They oh they didn't God. put a an, another uh, MCL or ACL in there. They yeah, left it alone. Heard of them cleaning things up? Yes, like, with, without like bro. This sounds like surgery. A, this sounds like a hustle. It does. It is it's a hustle. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> How old were you? 
This is not that long that's, ago. This is when I was 20. You're a kid. Eight or, well, I mean, yeah. They see a kid with insurance who's going to cover it. Yeah. And they're like, well, we can't really see. Yeah. Which, you, I don't know. I'm not a doctor or surgeon, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But wouldn't you say, let's wait, yeah. do another MRI? Yeah. It, rather than doing explorative surgery, because that's what that is. It's yes. an explorative surgery, which it's, I don't know if you do that for anything other than like cancer, where you're like, you got to go yeah. in and make it happen. Right, right. I thought wow. that, yeah, I thought Man, that was pretty interesting, that right? Is, wow. wow. I, I'm telling you, suspect. I was in more pain post surgery than uh, I was pre. Is that well, the worst? Uh, like, have you? Is that the biggest rip off you ever felt like you've had from? Because I have a bad one that I, I don't know if I, I want to share. But. Dentists are up there. I've, I've said that. Oh one. yeah, that's right. Really <laughs> yeah, nine cavities and My miraculously friend, the they gone away. Is, My yeah. candy consumption didn't slow down, but miraculously, <laughs> I, I have no cavities from another Dude, guy. They all healed. Uh, yeah, six years later, like okay, that uh, was that was weird. Another one. If I had like that, That's that are funny. hustle. <laughs> oh no, man! I just I got off a phone call right now. I was getting hustle. People, everybody's trying to hustle. Everyone's trying to hustle. Uh, you know, when you're it's young too, right especially when you're young kid, you look back and you go, "They took advantage of for sure." You know that I was naive. I had a, a, a Chinese Dude, mechanics medicine. take advantage of everybody. Listen, too. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I had a Chinese medicine doctor uh, at the time. I was getting. I don't remember what the issue necessarily was. I I did a physical, and I was I was I was in my twenties. And, uh, you know, you get to everything tested and I was like, you know, prostate enlargement runs in my family and they checked everything. PSA was fine, all that stuff. And I said, you know, but I, I, I don't know, maybe I was, I think I was hypochondriac. Okay. I was a little worried. My dad was getting some stuff. My grandfather just had uh, prostate cancer. I was a little hypochondriac. So I had a client refer me to a Chinese, Chinese medicine doctor. So I went to this woman, <laughs> had me laid down, I swear to God, it's a true story, had me lay down on a examining table on my side and had me pull my pants down a little bit. And she like did worked on my like bonch area, but like a bunch of, I'm telling you, it was one of the most awkward wow. moments of my entire life. And she was, and I was sitting there kind of like, doing? I don't know what, the, I don't know, acupressure. I don't know, dude. I was like, I felt vulnerable because I'm like this. Yeah, yeah, that's like the fetal position. And I'm, yeah, right? dude. And it was like 15 minutes of this. What? Yeah, dude. And I was like, this is, I feel like I'm being, like what's happening yeah. right now? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I hope she hears this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know what you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least you didn't have some like Turkish doctor with like big hairy fingers. Oh, like, well, that was uh, that was you, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> prostate check, you dude. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that. I had that. I had that. Pop Warner football, where it was, that, that football where it was like weird like that too. I oh, yeah. We in Pop Warner football. I remember we had to go get that prostate check, and there was just a line of you know what? How old are you? As well, they don't age. check your prostate when you're prop. Uh, they check your. They yeah. To see if you have a hernia. They, 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 so they, it, so they it, literally. Oh, wait, that, hey, I got a school. I, 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 I got a hernia. Hernia. Oh, hernia. Yeah, hernia. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's like you prostate. didn't put his finger in your head. They're not no, doing no, that. Okay. Hernia. Sorry. The kid okay. level. Hold so, on, hold on. But, right. but right. rows of kids, right? Waiting to get in there. And you get in there, it was like, drop your drawers, you know, lift your ball, cough, type of deal. And then pants are down. It's like, walk on your tippy toes across the other room and walk on, walk back. I was like, what the fuck was that for? Yeah. What do I got to You walk on your tippy toes and your pants down? Yeah, bro. That's not, that's not normal. Was this dude. camp? What was this? Yeah, this was like uh, <laughs> Pop Warner football. <laughs> Pop Warner football. We had all, wow. all of us do that. And when you're that age, you don't know that's part of the process. I'm told. Yeah, of course. You just that's what's crazy, bro. I got yeah. It's it's funny. I got similar, not like completely similar did story. Did you make but, a spin? Yeah, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they do. They did, like I hadn't had a physical in forever, and then so I was in college, and they were doing they're just doing physicals, and they do where you know they check the, uh, you know, you're making you do the cough test, and so. Apparently, I didn't know, like, their whole protocol changed. And so that was just like, you just do it yourself and you put your hand down your pants and do it. And then the doctor kind of evaluates and yeah. just there. But as this girl, she's like, okay. And then I just, you, you know, just whipped them down. I just did it down. Oh. I'm just sitting there, like, you know, I'm like, this. <laughs> she's like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Like she didn't know what to do. That was my, I'm like, what do you think? It's like I'm here. I'm ready for you. Like, <laughs> my first physical was also for Pop Warner. I played like uh, just a second and I quit. But yeah. when I, I had to do a physical and it was in front of my mom, my mom used to take me to the doctor. I was a kid, so she's uh, go with me. To the doctor. Well, at least she was there. And she's sitting there. I don't want. I never pull my pants down in front of my mom. By this point, I'm a teen. You know, I'm like a early young teenager. You know, uh, you know yeah. your mom see you. Yeah. And I remember the doctor's like, pull him down, and then I went, that's funny. My mom like you, looked away. And when you so think about that, when's the last time your mom sees you naked? Supposed to, or when did you? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, well, get, you get caught jerking off when you're 16. 
Not all of us got caught. Yeah, right? no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm trying no. to think like, when's the last time? You get like a rash I'll have to ask my mom like, that. My mom's yeah. in my house right now. Mom, when's the last time you see me naked? Just yeah. curious. Yeah. No, no. I wouldn't show my mom a rash. Like, I broke out in hives, you know, later on. And I was like, oh, I think I had to like kind of, you know, hey, you know, this isn't right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's that more, is that more awkward for mom or is that more awkward for you? Uh, Who do you think? It's probably it's probably you for yeah, sure, yeah. right? It's mom's like, probably like, mom's yeah, like I've seen you naked your yeah. whole life. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, and then well, people are like, why don't you tell your dad? Yeah, why don't you tell your dad? It's changed because your dad doesn't know where the doctor is or what the day. <laughs> <laughs> Show your mom. I don't know. Call yeah, somebody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, dad doesn't want to see rub it. Some, yeah. rub, dad's like rub some dirt. Like, on ooh, it. that's a that's a gnarly uh, rash you got yeah, there, yeah, son. Walk it off. You're fine. Yeah, yeah, you'll be all right. Rub some tussin on it. Ah, that's a good time. Anyway, hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps. Steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So uh, let's get back to, actually, you know what? You just made me think of something. Have you guys ever heard of, we're talking about like physicals and sports and stuff. And I know Canadians right now are going like, to love this, but have you guys ever heard of Terry Fox? You know who that is? Terry Fox. Doug, look up this. Look up mm -mm. this kid, Terry Fox. T e r r y f o x. I never knew about this kid, but he was a kid who he got diagnosed with this type of cancer. I don't know. Lost the leg, and then as a way to bring awareness to cancer uh, treatment or cancer you know, research, he ran across Canada. He ran a marathon every single day with a prosthetic leg. Wow. They have a statue built oh, of this sick. kid. Oh, huh. It's crazy. Now he eventually, that's him right there. He, oh, I think there's a whole documentary on this guy. He eventually passed away. He eventually died as a kid. Uh, but how many, how many miles did he end up running? Does it say? I'm almost positive. There's a documentary about this guy. Oh God. What a crazy story. Yeah. Young man. No, you know, heard, and he, I can't believe I've heard And there's that. a picture of him running with his prosthetic leg and he ran every day a marathon. He ran 26 miles a day through Canada's Atlantic province, Quebec and Ontario. However, on September 1st, after 104, wow, he ran 3,339 miles. Wow. He had to stop uh, because of his, uh, his cancer. Wow. What a crazy story. Yeah, there's a, there's a documentary on him. That's, that's, there's a yeah. statue that they built of him, I think, in that area of the whole thing. But anyway... Yeah, really interesting. I wish more people knew. I wish I knew. I about know. This guy. Yeah, there's a see the, there's, there's a, a a a documentary, the Terry Fox story. I've seen it. Okay. I've seen this, Have yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Like when he, the picture came up, I'm like, oh, I I, I remember. He's a, it's a great story. Hmm. It was a good documentary. I so inspiring. It. That's the one I saw right there. That's the picture where he's, it's not a picture now. It's a statue. But you know, kind of makes you feel like um, like we're wusses. Like, yeah, like we're yeah, <laughs> no, like people real struggle but, and dealing know, with it. You know, it's, well, I, I mean, also the other side of this it's too, inspiring is through tragedy. You know what? You know, he's found purpose. You know totally. what's crazy though, too, though, is like th there's stories like this. We don't highlight this stuff enough anymore. You're That's right, what I feel dude. like. Well, right. doom and doom. I feel like this happens all the time. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I think there's actually really cool, like great stories, great stories like this. There is a, isn't there a news network? I feel like it's called Good, Good News. Good News Network? Yeah, something like that. That's all they're dedicated to just sharing yes. these type of stories. Isn't that sad that we, I like, was that was, I wish almost all our news was that. Could you imagine what, what we would be, what we would be like culturally? Yeah. If like, 90% of our news was centered around all positive things happening in the world and then a very small percentage was only reporting yeah. all the negative bad stuff and not the other way around. It could be if we just consumed it that way. Yeah, but we're, yeah. Yeah, we're wired not to. We're not. We're wired, we're wired for the danger, we're bad, look gossip. out. Yep. Yeah. Why would it be? Yeah, it's just, it's just too logical, right? And like, I mean, even on the esoteric level, like you've seen like See, water sort of like take on, uh, you know, some of the characteristics of like the words and the energy kind of like, you've oh, seen right. those like ice when it forms and yeah. like it kind of like, you know, the, the crystallization of it forms in a very specific way based off of like the energy, the energy that was uh, uh, placed into it. And now, so we're wired this way, right? Yeah. But do you think it's possible if we actually educated our kids on their way up and made them more? So I had this talk with Katrina actually last night. We were talking about Max and the phone. So I, I didn't know this. I didn't realize I would throw one of my family members on the bus. They gave their really young kids all cell phones, like really young. And that only lasted like a month. And then they, they like backpedaled because yeah. it was such a terrible idea. How old were they? Really young. Oh, like, okay. uh, the like, oldest is 10, and there's oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oldest is 10, and then there's like a five year old, a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like way too young for these kids to have phones, right? And they obviously backpedaled pretty quick. 
But anyway, so Katrina and I are talking about. It. So I kind of have this idea that because I, I think about a lot about that because of what you guys have had to go through yeah. and like you guys obviously were. I know you were way before. You were a little bit after, so you have a little bit of a different mindset on it. I think I have like a. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of time to think about it, right? So yeah. wait, so this is my latest thing. I told Katrina, and she was like, not sure about. it. I can tell she's still married, and I, and I think this is what I'm going to do. So I said, because how can you how can you say that one kid at uh, if you have a really mature kid at 13. Very different than a uh, immature sixteen-year-old sure. kid, right? Sure. And yep. so, how do how and how do I not uh, and, and how do I not uh, figure out that? So here's my idea. So, uh, unplugged, irresistible, and iGen are three three very important books for me about this topic. And so, when the day comes and my son starts I'll asking for it, it, I want I want you to read all three and have a book report. Perfect. And you and then you and you and I will now why that this will be so powerful in my mind is because if he's really motivated to get a phone, he's gonna do that. And then he'll be able to report back to mm -hmm. me what it says. And then he'll be educated on the powers and the dangers of it. And then when I put parameters around it and give it to him, he understands why. That's, the, that's important. You can refer to. So that's, that's important, yeah. And so because then he'll know where you're coming from. That's right. Instead of me just being the, the overlord yeah, yeah, yeah. who says you can only do this. Yeah. Sure, son. You want you want to phone with your phones yeah. after you read these three books yeah. and you you report to your dad what you learned from those books. I love it. Then dude. together we'll sit down yeah. and we'll get you a phone and we'll talk about yeah. how we're going to use that phone. The experts yeah. now, yeah, the ones smart. that are that are sounding the alarms, are now saying they say wait till that least in high school. And then somebody, uh, I saw one guy get interviewed and they said, well, what would be ideal? And I said, as long as possible. So uh, that's everything that's, I've read too, right? Yeah. But you know how generic is that? Like, what if you actually have a very mature kid? Like, so I, I told you guys a story. My, my cousin, Stephanie, yeah. she's the one who homeschools. And I told you about the way her kids who, you know, some are in high school, some are junior high, how they communicate about that stuff. And they did such a good job of educating their kids mm -hmm. on that that they they have very limited time that they're allowed to use it and they have a lot of restriction around it that their parents have put control on because they have i guess uh there's a difference between um uh google phones and like uh, apple phones there's more in terms of control yeah more control with like google phones than there are with apple phones like what they can he can really control a lot of it and gets all kinds of alerts if they do this or that mm. to him directly and so that's part of why they all have those types of phones and talking to the kids, it's really cool to see the maturity that they have around it. And it makes you go like, well, yes, wait as long as you possibly can. But what if I have a kid that like can communicate that and understand that? And then there is some value to them using it. Like that kid, to me, regardless of their whether they're you know 20 or 60, they, they deserve to be able to utilize it to, just like anything else. Like we would not throw a, a eight-year-old into a car and say, hey, go figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They had to go through driving permits and practice and a test and all that stuff of that to wield this powerful, dangerous tool. But yeah. then now they have the freedom to do that. Well, I feel like the phone should be something like that. It's like, this is, and then for me, it's going to be- And the controls because you know that developmentally, they can't control themselves in many cases. That's right. So you're going to have to put those. And then, and I think after reading those books, he'll understand why, why you're do, doing why that. Why I'm doing that. Yeah. You're building and crafting these disciplines going into it, which is, that, that's perfect. Because, yeah, everything that I've, you know, failed with that in terms of introducing that we've tried to kind of, uh, you know, reverse or like address. It's a lot, all communication and everything like you're talking about with like the why, why we're doing this, right. why, why we need to, uh, you know, where, where you see this obvious slip when it, when it comes to grades and like we, we and then boom, it's gone. And, uh, he's, it just, it took like repetition, 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 like months. And then finally it's like clicked. And so he'll take his phone and then he'll actually hang it up before he goes to bed. And he loves doing that. He's like, he doesn't even want it. Oh, that's great. Because uh, he knows his tendency is to just blah and, and not get good sleep. And But that's the other thing, too, about being the mature kid. Like, he works. Like, he wants to work. He wants – and so – and he needs to constantly communicate with his employer and then us and then scheduling rides and scheduling with other coaches that he works with. And so it's like – you know, it, it's somewhat of a necessary evil. Of the, course, you know that's why I mean. Like, you yeah. have all these professionals yeah. that are like saying things like "wait as long as you can" or "you shouldn't until this age." It's like, well, there's a very wide range of yeah. kids that are mature and not mature, and there's a, a wide range of parents that are really good at communicating and not so good at communicating, and that makes all the difference in the world on these kids. And I feel like if I do a really good job of staying ahead of it and doing a good job of communicating mm -hmm. with, with them. That maybe he can have it a little bit sooner than probably I would like or what like that because he's done the necessary work it's, to learn. It right? just totally. highlights. It's just tough, you know. As a parent, it highlights. Uh, it, man, it's hard work because 
you, you the world is going to try and raise your kid. I mean, yeah. that's really what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just that. There's a lot of stuff that's out there. The world's going to try to raise your kids. So it is you against the world. And so my challenge with this was always like, well, then they're going to be the weird kid. They're going to be the one that sticks out. They're going to want, it's like many cases that's necessary. That's what you want. In many cases. That's right. It's necessary. And it sucks because it's hard because you have to monitor so much. Um, and now I understand, you know, the push for regulations for kids. I get it. I get it as a parent. I understand it because there's a lot of parents out there that don't have the luxury of having the time and energy to do that much parenting and observing or watching. A lot of parents work a lot just to make the you know ends meet or whatever. And so I get now why there's some people like, we need to regulate certain things because I'm not, I can't be there. Like I work all day my kid comes home, they're home for three hours or four hours by themselves. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's almost impossible. I need help essentially. Do you, but you agree with that? I agree with, with, I definitely agree with regulating regulations for, for minors, for kids. I do hundred percent. Just like I agree with the age limit for alcohol or, yeah. or tobacco and stuff like that. I mean, I, 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 do. I, I feel like, and I know like, uh, I mean, there's going to be something like, so I, obviously I've had this opportunity, uh, to see this ahead of time. I have you know, fathers who are ahead of me that I, like feel like, Oh, I wish I'd done it differently. Or Justin's in the middle of it right now. And so, okay, I've got this luxury. So actually what I even think more about is what is the thing I'm not seeing? Right. What is a thing that yeah. uh, I think is just okay right now, or I'm not really paying attention to probably like what you guys were 10, 15 yeah. years ago with it. But at the end of the day, personally, the way I look at all that stuff is it all falls on me. It goes back to the leadership thing. Of course. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm the one who's leading my family. And you know, if I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't subscribe to, I don't have time or I don't have this, or I want somebody else to regulate or help me parent. It's like, if that doesn't get done or a good job isn't done, it falls on my shoulders as a, as a, ultimately, as a you know, course. it's course correct. It, this is the thing, you know, it's, it's just, you have to be honest and like, like this isn't working. Yeah. I made a mistake. Yeah. I mean, I mistake. thought this was okay. I thought we Let's could take, do this. take it on yourself. Don't yep. put it on your kid. It's, you know, the, the stats on even on homeschooling are crazy. Like the odds that you're, I think I've brought this up before, but the odds that your kid is going to adopt a similar, uh, mind frame, or understanding or philosophy is their parents when they're homeschooled is significantly higher than when they go off to school yeah. because then the school is raising your kids in many ways. And so a lot of reasons why people homeschool nowadays is they say, Hey, I don't want my kid to, to learn these things or to, to think that well, these particular these things days. are okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you think that's more to do with, uh, homeschooling and schools as much as it is that the parents that send their kids off to school just allow that to happen. And then they don't continue the parenting after that. It's like, to me, I would think that you do, you have so much influence. Well, you have and, to, and then and you're then forced it, to, when you're in homeschool, you're right. And then as, as they get older, you just start losing. I don't remember what the stats are, but I think once the kid, I don't remember what the age was. It was some teenage year, 15 or 16. Like once they reach a certain age, the parents influence is like almost it's so it's smaller than the influence from their peers. So at some point it switches. Yeah. Did you hear, I, I can't, uh, I think I share, I don't know if I share this with you guys or not. Uh, I follow this guy from um, bigger pockets, right? I used to listen to that podcast oh, a lot. Yeah. I don't I listen to it as much anymore. Them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the, the, one of the main original hosts, uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon, the beard, I think is like what his handle is or whatever. I heard him being interviewed and he made a comment that I thought was really interesting. And I probably, uh, I could see myself getting behind this, but it was, it seemed extreme. But he's like, he said, like, I'll move my family across the country if my kid has a friend that I can't get rid of. Like, yeah, yeah. He's That's, like, if if he has got a toxic friend, I feel so passionally yeah. about how it's a bold move, but how, I get it. I yeah, get what he's saying how how much a toxic friend can influence your kid, especially at the young young middle age, the teenage years. He's like, I. That's how much I care about my family, and and knowing how difficult that is to tell your kid who their friends are going to be. He's like, I'll move across the country if yeah. I need to, and he goes, That's how passionate I feel about like how the importance mm. of that. And I'm like, Damn, that's crazy. But then I think about, it, I'm like, Man. You know, it's real easy to say, uh, yeah, oh, not that I wouldn't do that. I would just tell my kid he can't. Well, yeah, right. Try telling your teenage kid they can't be friends mm -hmm. with someone like that. Yeah. Like, that's probably really tough to do because, if anything, the kid probably at that point doubles down and that becomes their best friend yeah. because dad says, I can't hang out with them. So what do you do in that situation? You know, like if your, your friend, your son or daughter is hanging out with someone who is, you know, poorly influencing yeah, them. Yeah, it's like a poker hand. Like, what's your best? hand what's your best move there yeah you know and it's like it, maybe that is the best move right, right. like if if you have 
you you can kind of play that all the way out. Like what's going to transpire like the next year and like how many, you know, things uh, is my kid going to get involved in that we could have avoided if we just like up, uprooted and left. That's why it's, I mean, it's also important as you know, who the parents and people are you hang out with. Cause those are the people that are going to bring their kids around. And that's how you create that. I think it's around adolescence. I was trying to look it up. But yeah, I think I it's around like adolescence when the their, the influence from their peers begins to outweigh the influence from the parents. Imagine though how hard- so you start to lose your power. <laughs> yeah. You know. As Imagine a though how difficult that is. I know Justin, you and I have talked a little bit off air like that challenge, right? Of like like how yep. like how you you can't really control that, right? Like like how do you, like how do I as a dad? I mean, you can control some things. Like I guess their school and then the people that are around the most. I was lucky that I have cousins that are my age. Yeah, that I was around all the time. So no matter what, they were always more of an influence on me than the kids at school. Yeah, that's because easy because that's a, that's a, right. as a parent, that's an easier thing to handle. Exactly, the kids. But I mean, like, so what do I do? Let's like pretend. Let's play this how that right. you know Max ends up. You know, for some reason, he's attracted to the the kid who's got the dysfunctional home and is a fuck up and yeah. is constantly trying to get him in trouble. You know, do I just flat out say like I don't like your friend? You, you can't come over. He can't come over. You can't, you can't hang out with him. I mean, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, depends I, on the age. It, right? Well, yeah, maybe. But uh, does it? I mean, does it I matter? Mean, I, the age? I honestly just uh, it, it sucks. I think for you know to to get to that point where you got to like address it. But if, I feel, I feel like it's better to be radically honest and like yeah, upfront and yeah. be like, look, like this kid just doesn't give me a good vibe. Like, I don't know what his story is, his background. That's where first thing I'll do is ask a lot of questions. And if I'm, if I'm asking and Ethan is, is really like picking up on this because like, you know, uh, if I'm asking him kind of interrogating him about somebody, I'm asking a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, so I could get enough data to, to make a better, you know, evaluation. Uh, and you know, and then we've had moments where it's like, there was something that came up where I was like, oh, are you getting into this? And it's like alarming. And it's like, you know, he's, he's going to be influenced. And so I'm looking at this kid and, uh, and I've actually, <laughs> I've had to drive a kid home, you know, from hanging out from him. Like he's, he can't stay here. He's going home. <laughs> uh, and I took him to his house and I told him, I'm like, you know, try, try again sometime. But here's what you want to do next time. You want to make a better impression. You want to look at adults in the eyes when you talk to them. And, you know, you want to, like, we're not your peers. Like, yeah. you have to approach adults differently. Yeah. And you made a bad impression. And this is a lesson you're going to have to learn. And I was like, and I'm not, that's outside my character, like, typically to, like, be very, but when it comes to my kids, that's exactly how I am. I yeah. can't help it. Yeah. Uh, and so the kid was like, ah, oh, taken aback. Like, nobody's ever told him stuff like that before but it's just yeah. like that's not like a common thing that's taught anymore uh from other adults like you, you gotta treat adults with respect yeah if you're gonna stay in their house yeah you're not gonna stay in my house and not respect me for damn straight you're out yeah yeah so yeah, yeah i've <laughs> i have had to have that i mean that's why i i mean i agree with you i think i think that i think i would take the same you know radical honesty approach like it's almost always better to go that direction i think i would also pursue um the parents because I also recognize that, you know, every parent probably goes through a phase where their kid is challenged or more difficult than others. And if I felt like I could come to the parent, like let's say it was let's say it was one of your kids, right? Let's say you had the shit kid, right? That my right. kid's hanging out with. Yeah. And I and I'm <laughs> like would suck. Yeah, it would suck. It would suck. But then I I come and I meet but we don't know each other. Back yet. To your house we, yeah, like, oh, we don't we don't know each other yet, right? And I introduce myself and then I meet you and then I really like you and I'm like, Hey, I just want to give you a heads up, dude. Like your kid's getting my kid to do some shit like this. And how you respond to that matters everything to yeah. me. Because if I can come to you and tell you your kids getting my kid to do some bullshit and like that it's not okay I, and I don't want to cut the relationship off and then the way you respond and if you get on it yep. and you can control you it right away what do you mean Maybe it's your kid Maybe exactly your kid. if yeah. you get defensive and you're like whatever about it or you're a loser like I'm like oh, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna come to my son and I'm gonna be like here's the deal I don't I don't like your friend and I don't like his dad and so that's a problem for me Mm -hmm. Like if, if, and honestly, he's getting you into trouble. He's doing these things. And, and, and then I would give him the whole spiel of you're the average of the people you hang out with and all that stuff and teach him how important that is and say, and, and it'd be okay. Maybe if I met his dad and I thought he was learning something good from his dad, but his dad's a shit butt too. So I don't want you hanging out with him. So that's probably how we go down. Yeah, yeah. But if I felt like 
I met Sal and Sal, I like, I really liked you. And you're like, man, dude, yeah, yeah. I'm having a hard time right now with the kid. Yeah, it's his mom's I fault. <laughs> <laughs> man, I like you. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Son of a bitch, his mom's a pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say you're a cool kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes to her house again. every other weekend, yeah, man. No, She's no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Yeah. No. I, I think that's the move, though. I mean, you know, I don't. Uh, that would be really, it's, really it's difficult. It's not easy being a parent, man. You know, it's like you, you're you want to be buddies. You can't be a buddy all the time. You got to be you guide them and and shepherd them. Well, also, who's having these conversations? Like, yeah. I can't find these conversations anywhere. Like, no. we're who's having this conversation about that stuff? Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. I knew that off air because you had shared that with me, which is part of why I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. But a lot of people just don't talk about that, and that's a big deal to have as a parent. Yeah. Like, oh, it was a big to figure that out. Otherwise, if you just let some random kid teach your kid, like you could have had a good kid, and he's going to go down the wrong path because that kid really influences. That's him. how that's yeah. how powerful their influence is. Yes, you know? I know people like that. They hung out with the wrong people, and it just it just took them down. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of people like uh -huh. that. I'm. This is one of my favorite traits. And I, and I think I see that in my son. Like, so the, like, I love that my son like loves Bowser. Like, that's so weird. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And he like, he hates Mario. He hates Luigi. <laughs> he likes all the bad guys. And like, I remember when he first was like all into that, like Katrina was just like, it's so weird. My, our son likes all the bad guys. And so like, cool, I'm like, man. I love that. That is different. Yeah, he's yeah, different. He and he owns it. Like yeah. he rocks Bowser and rocks the yeah, bad yeah, guys. Yeah, Why yeah. everyone's like, no, Mario. He's like, no, Bowser. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. And I love that because that was like me. I was, I love yeah. to be different than everybody else bit, yeah. and so i hope that that's going to be a, a way that i can lean into that when he runs into that potential situation like nah son you don't want to be like that kid you 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 blaze your own path and you're not a follower and you don't totally. need to be that way so i i think there's also that like as a parent you have to learn to see if you have a kid that's like that because certain kids are different like in our family when i look at all of my siblings there's definitely some of us that are like you know trailblazers and are going to be ourselves and there's definitely those in our family that are like you know, follow the crowd wherever mm -hmm. the crowd will go. And as a parent, you got to be aware of which kind of kid you have and then know that when those situations come up, how you probably need to handle that or else the kids can, you know, it's raped. another stat around that. Or, I don't know. It's not, it is a stat, but, uh, that I heard that was really impactful to me a long time ago was that you're going to know your kids as adults way longer than you're going to know them as kids. I know it's what wild. a trip. So it's like, you know, That's this really weird to think it's a about. short time. Yeah. Like it's really a short I mean, and really you have a lot of influence with your kid up until a certain point. And even when they're and like as I just said, you start to lose that influence and then they're out. But then you'll know them as they're adults much longer. So well, it's like that sets the again, stage. Again, this is also what I guess that even reaffirms more that you know the move, like moving somewhere, it's like temporary. That's right. right? It's, it's a short part of a your few life. Few years. Yeah. That's exactly That's why I think That's all you have, you know. For yeah. that and one thing, moment. one thing that I learned just because you know one one thing I struggled with, uh, I mean it's been a long time now since I got divorced with my first marriage, but it's one of the things that that lasted for a long time. It was, it's just traumatic. You go through that, you gotta do, you know divide the time with your kids. Very hard to go through. One of the things for me was it was like I didn't want to upset my kids. I wanted to make things as easy and, and good as possible. Yeah. yeah, and it seeped into and took over my ability to create boundaries and to parent. If, in fact, it made it very hard for me to do any of that. I always wanted to be the the nice guy, the good yeah. guy, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, more recently, I'd say over, just recently over the last year or so, I've really started to strengthen that. Um, and your kid doesn't like it; they they throw a fit, and then they're over it. And that's the part that really, I knew that would happen logically, but right. to experience it, like, oh yeah, like yesterday she had a meltdown because I said she can't go to that thing or whatever, and it was all big drama, <laughs> and then today it's fine. Or maybe a few days they're mad and then you're okay. And then I noticed I started getting closer yeah. with my with my kid, you know, because that's great because yeah. they feel cared for. Well, I was going to say that's for the sure. other point that we've made before is that the kids want actually want, discipline and structure whether they say that or communicate that or you think they that. otherwise feel neglected that's yeah, right it's, it's, it's a form of love yeah it's a form of love it, it, you think the attention is always about like you know adoring them and like giving them all this positivity but really it's like give me structure yeah you know, no. give give me this guidance no my, my, and, my, my and wife was telling a story like that she was telling my daughter how she's like oh i watched that movie when <laughs> i was nine and my wife my daughter's like nine you know she's like, oh yeah i went to the movies who'd you go with Oh, I was by myself. And my, my daughter's like, huh? She's like, yeah, nobody, 
I could do whatever I want when I was good. And it and it didn't feel good. No, of course it not. It felt neglectful. Yeah. You know? Well, and you always have to remember as a parent too that when when they, they're acting out a little bit, that's they're actually looking for the boundaries. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a natural thing for them to actually do yeah. that, and they're looking for it. When's Dad gonna step in? Oh, I can get away with that. Let's see if I can get away with it. And then it, and they're 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 trying to figure that out subconsciously. That's what they're doing. And so having compassion in the in those those moments and times that hey, this is very natural for them to stretch the boundary a little bit to make sure you're checked to make sure you're still yeah. checked in, and then you provide that boundary. Like no, that ain't okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's the boundary. Like yeah. okay, and then and then they might be mad. Initially, when they run into that boundary, but then they course correct and they then they and they feel loved, they feel cared yeah, about yeah, because well, you've done that. Yeah, like, I, I wish I wish back then I, I was able to seek out more information on uh, raising kids while divorce. I, there, mm. I don't feel like there's enough. Maybe there is. I didn't go out looking for it, but I didn't have any role models because in my family everybody's still together. But there was lots of challenges around that that you you know you you don't anticipate. It's not the same. There's a lot of things that seep in that make you feel uh, like you can't uh, be the way you want to be or whatever without even realizing it. You know, yeah. There was more conversation around that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think some of that has to do with what you have already talked about with yourself is just knowing that you have a hard time. You're not the type of person to go ask for help and look for that. Oh, person. Yeah. You're used to being the guy with all the answers yep. and leading. Yep. And so it's not in your nature to be like, you know, your nature is, I got this. I'll mm-hmm. figure it yep, out. Yep. I always do. Or that or problem doesn't exist. That's or, 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 that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or worse. That's the other one. That's, That's my go-to, active denial. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, I, if it was a t-shirt, it was in my gut. Oh. If, yeah, if, there, if I had a t-shirt that was like a motto for like my, my mess ups, it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's that one dog in hell. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I'm that's cool. how, that's why I like. We're I like good. the. Yeah, what what movie is that from? You, what fine stands for? No. Freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that's what fine stands <laughs> for. Freaked fine. out, Everything's insecure, fine. neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was me forever, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit, dude. Ter- oh. terrible. So, hey, I wanted to. Uh, we're supposed to talk about Zbiotics today, but for listeners who don't know, it's one of our sponsors. Oh. This is a probiotic. That's genetically modified. You take it before you drink alcohol, and then the bacteria, which lasts 18, 24 hours, I looked it up, it breaks down acetaldehyde in the gut. So the result is you feel way better because acetaldehyde from alcohol, that's what makes us oftentimes feel like crap. Anyway, uh, I was looking up reviews, third-party reviews for z So people don't know this. The way we discovered them was I brought up an article, which, by the way, I found. It was an old article. Oh, you found the original article? I found an article where God, there was it's been that long that we've been working. There was about. a guy that uh, was this it was one that got their attention. Yes, it was yeah. a tech article, and this guy talked about how there's this weird probiotic that you know prevents, you know, it helps you feel better after drinking, whatever. And then the guy himself said, "Oh my God, I can't believe it worked." So I talked about it on the show. Zbiotics got this boost in sales. Tried yeah. to figure out where it came from. They contacted us. Yeah. So yeah. I found. I ended up finding. And then they article. sent the product because then at that point that was yeah. like the initial. Yeah. Then they yeah. sent the product. And then we tested it. Remember we <laughs> oh, tested. We didn't just God. test it. We took it to the we, limit. We dude. pushed the boundaries. Like, oh my. Was hurting. Is that and that's Doug thinks it's still on it's Instagram. On, it's on Instagram. We'll find it for the YouTube channel for yeah. sure. I, I know it's, it's on, there somewhere. Listen, it's in, in, it's a, in yeah, it's on a reel on Instagram a long time ago. I know it's in there somewhere. Way back when we first probably probably back. 2018 you go all the way back to when we first partnered with people need to understand so what we were trying to do is we're trying to make a video that would be funny but that also would display this new uh, company we're working with and what it was we bought a drinking game yeah and adam myself justin and doug played the we're going to play the drinking game but before that we would drink zbotics and then we would talk about the next day we would record a podcast about how we felt yeah so that was the that was what we were supposed to do. And we were sold, though. I mean, I was sold and, right and, afterwards. And, that. But here's what we did. We thought, we looked at the rules of the drinking game, and we thought, this is going to move too slow. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's speed make up it and more let's do hard alcohol. I'm like, yay. <laughs> and let's make it more aggressive. Like, you have to take two drinks here, three drinks, whatever. Dude, I was smashed. Just, bro. Just destroyed. I actually The most drunk destroy. I've ever been. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think even since then. Uh, no. I don't no. think I've had We that. never. No, dude. Even as a collective group, we, we were like, and we've gone out and like, hey, let's have let's let our hair out a little bit and it was just like we've never since tapped anywhere close yeah. no no no. i was 
I was stumbling. Barely even buzzed. I was stumble drunk, like where yeah. I where I'm walking out. I was on the toilet, and dude, I had uh, my wife pick me up, and she's like, "Dude, you." Smell I mean, they it. they <laughs> have they have single handedly uh, changed my relationship with alcohol. Yeah. Um, I was never. I, now I have a I have drinks that I like, and there's things that I'll try yeah, out. Yeah, because you don't feel like, like dog shit. Yeah, I just was. I was for the longest time an anti alcohol person because it always ruined. Not only did it ruin that day and night for me, yeah. it ruined the next yeah. day. Well, we actually came like in the crap, next day. It's not and, motivated. We came into work and we recorded the podcast. Yeah. Who won that drinking game? Probably me. No. No, you and I were out fast. Were I we? Think, I remember I think Doug. Justin. I thought we thought Justin, Justin would. Doug. I don't think Justin did. I think he did win. I think I went too hard. Like, I, I he no, did. no, I think I you, went like past like, uh, um, you got to find that. You didn't, you that whole I time you too fast. I was either out first too. or second, if oh. I'm not mistaken. Oh. And I know, I don't think, I know it was you and I didn't win. I'm pretty sure about that. It was I think between me and Doug. I'm pretty sure because I remember Doug, everybody was like, oh shit, Doug's yeah, going to whatever. Was dark Maybe it was Doug. Maybe it's Doug. I, I don't think I won. I don't think no. it was Justin because I thought we thought Justin would win and that we, we were surprised, I thought. Mm. That's why I thought I won. Maybe well, I he got run. the sickest, he said, remember? Oh, yeah. Said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was fine. I was blew me away how, how fine I was. That's why I was like, this product is You know legit. what? We haven't seen that clip. Yeah, well, we ran out of what everybody was drinking in the beginning and then they added like whiskey. Like It, it was, was oh, cool, whiskey. Yeah, just straight whiskey shots. Yeah. It was just straight whiskey shots of that. I'm just like, yay. That was when we used to be fun. Yeah. Huh? We used to be fun. Oh, yeah. How funny is that? Right? I mean, the, the, I was cool back in the day. How long we've been doing this for now? Like, to look back and just like, I mean, I'm now officially, right? Or I'm coming up on that in the next couple months of this officially being the thing that I've done longer than anything else. Really? That, that's weird to me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's really, really weird to me. It, the, you know when it feels like it's been a long time because it doesn't feel like it's it's both feels like I've been been doing this for a long time but also feels new I think it's that you obviously enjoy it so much but it's when I look second it's your third marriage when I, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah when yeah. I <laughs> when I look at old clips of us and it looks like like you ate that like guy? I ate that kid <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my head. Right, right, right. I look at it. Oh, you know like? You stole all my Listen. muscle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it looks like slowly muscle I, head. I absorbed it, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you took all my muscle. I, I would like to see a time lapse of that. Hey, that it's would just be like a, an exchange. Hey, like, <laughs> hey I, you know what's actually crazy? I bet. Body fat percentage and lead body mass has never changed. Hey, listen. Like, as the group, it's like, it's I'm trying like to stay as consistent as it, possible. It's, That's how like, it's, it's, it's like that Japanese fat tax. Like, our company, body weight, lean body yes, mass, has not changed. It's not changed. There's just been a transfer. It just morphs. It, so, it shifts, yeah, you know, we are in one. the group. We yeah. are one. We've yeah, stayed yeah. one the whole Justin time. Justin and Doug, I think, stayed the same. We the same. They have. They have. Same. Doug went backwards. Same he always looks younger. Uh, I mean, I was fatter in the beginning. You guys gave me shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, you were fat now. I would say you. Listen to your fat head. <laughs> no, no. Your, head, your head's still bigger than mine. Oh, God. Oh, no, God. No, no, no. We were just, Katrina and I were just watching something. I have to, I'll have to look up what it was. It was like, it was a good like documentary show or something. And we were talking about uh, companies and leadership. And uh, Mark Cuban was getting interviewed. And he was talking about, I wish I remember what it was. Uh, we're talking about like uh, dy dynamics of executives and mm. teams like that. And it's like, and talking about, how difficult and a partnership like this, how crazy and rare yeah. and and not only just to work, but the uh, longevity of it. I know. Like even in situations yeah, where there very, is partnerships like that, it's very rare it goes on you know for that. I have so, some bands have done it. You know? I figured out the secret. Hmm. We tolerate each other so well. That's really what it is. It's tolerated. Seriously. Yes. I yeah. think we're all pretty annoying yeah, at some point. I have annoying point. shit. Yeah. I know I'm annoying for yeah. sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, Adam, yeah. you know, yeah. Doug, everybody's got their dude, shit. Dude. Yeah. Yes. But I think we're to we tolerate each other. Maybe you think what yeah. it you think what it is is that it's uh they're so different the things that we hate about each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're different, like, completely like different. They're so different, you know what I'm saying? Things. Like if they were the Stop same. Stop listening, shit. You're, you're so yeah, close. You, you, yeah. <laughs> I know where you're yeah. going. We're not. We're not going to put all this out there. So dude. for example, yeah, yeah, for example, so you got a phone. It's got a laundry list. Talk about the top five things. Hit these beats real quick. Stop, dude. Stop. I mean, you think you think that you think it's more of tolerating, appreciating. Well, I tolerate's a bad word. It's more like we appreciate each other so much. Well, because you get this blind bad spots. shit is fine. Yeah, you get you get like you know strengths and then blind spots, and then that's what, like the, the mix is, of what how it all what definitely makes it what would be not that I ever want to experience this for sure. So I'm not putting this out here together, but uh, it's a lot different. At least in teams I've played on stuff like that, 
when you have hard personalities, right? It everything is easier when you're winning. When you're losing yeah. and you have that boy, is that difficult? Yeah. We've been really blessed that we've continued to find a way to win. Yeah, for true. almost ten years now, we've won. Would you want to lose with anybody else? Yeah, that's the uh, thing. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to feel because yeah. then, then would be difficult. I feel like that's what we've always met. What and yeah. I think that's the to me that's the redeeming thing of everything is as annoying everyone's traits are. are we still find a way to come together and win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we didn't come together and still win, and we were winners, Adam. <laughs> yes, and we, win. win. and we lost, <laughs> yeah. and we you were, to do again. and we were losing. Don't do that. That's, then that's I pagan. think all those traits would be exacerbated. <laughs> Sorry, wait, wait, hold on. Don't yeah. you think so? Yeah. Uh, of course. Yeah. Of course. That's you know. But I personally, also, I, I wouldn't want to lose with anybody else. I, I think. Yeah. I th yeah. I agree with that too. Yeah. I think if um, we were on a sinking ship, I always feel like we'll work our way out. I do. I feel confident. I feel yeah. like we'll figure something out. But if we were on a sinking ship that was on fire and we were trying to figure our way out and we didn't, it would probably go down with all yeah. of our middle I mean, fingers. I'm going to burn air. like some flesh. It'd be a like, bunch of middle you know, fingers like yeah. this as it sunk. Yeah. And that makes me feel good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Makes I don't, me feel I, good I don't like it. to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have both middle fingers. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, so we'll keep winning. You yeah. Guys. I'm pretty convinced the winning has a lot to do with it. I feel I have a feeling like that. So oh, yeah. I think we're such shitty that. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Like, you guys suck. Like, Listen, this well, we keep winning, so we're fine. Uh, the minute we lose. Uh, I mean, but it's like, I mean, I can really relate that because I've experienced that before on a team and with with personalities. Because anytime you're on a sport team, there's not everybody is alike, and there's a lot of personalities that are stronger than others and guys that now get, here's get the question rolled. is 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 it that the that the team that works together well understands each other's weaknesses and strength wins yeah. or is it that the winning team then is okay with each other's weaknesses which one causes which right you're probably right you're probably it's the it is the fact that we work so well together therefore we win yeah and then it's this feedback loop right yeah, because yeah. we're winning we exactly. also put up with a lot of things yeah, like yeah. that so you're right. And I think so long as like that we have that team attitude of, hey, at the end of the day, I don't give a shit. I don't like this about this person, this for this, this. But as long as we, we come together enough yeah. that we win, yeah. that we, we put points on the board and we win, like then I can put up with all that stuff. It's when someone gives up or decides that they don't care about winning anymore that this becomes a problem. And that hasn't happened. So. Yeah, oh, awesome. is this it? Oh, that's you it. Found it. Oh, we found Did it. Did you see what it, it said is? about Justin? He drank 94. Can you turn it up so <laughs> I can hear it? Can we hear it? It said you drank 94 proof on the thing. Oh, oh true 94 is. proof. It said 94 Does it drinks. say who won? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does at the end. We did a drinking game. This is not what a fitness podcast should do. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Shot after shot after shot after shot. Take another shot. You forgot to jump in. Oh, no! 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 Bro, that was the most drunk I've been in at least over a decade. Do not do what we did. I don't think we anticipated getting that destroyed. That, that was way overboard. But here's the trippy part, and this is 100% true. I don't feel nauseous. I don't have a headache. I don't feel dehydrated at all. I feel totally fine. It's absolutely brilliant. It's so brilliant that I actually worry that it's going to increase people's uh, how much people drink. What's their What's their tag? Have you seen their tagline? It's uh, drink like there is a tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah, people like say, that. drink like there's no tomorrow. Let's yeah. drink like there is a tomorrow. Dude. Well, wait a second. Before we before we take this, explain to me how what, what exactly that we're taking right okay, now. Okay, so Z-Biotics uh, is a probiotic that's genetically engineered to produce an enzyme that breaks down uh, acetyl, uh, acetyl aldehyde, I think it's called, and it's a byproduct of alcohol. So this builds up in the system and causes a lot of the negative effects of alcohol. So this helps break it down. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see. see. Here we are. Uh, Cheers. Hope it works. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sriracha. Huh? Yeah, because right. I hate hangovers, so. Yeah. Tell me about Here it. Here we go, Doug. It tastes like tastes like water. <sighs> Pork 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 well, that was a big goal. Uh, for some reason, I'm not highly motivated to win this game. <laughs> All oh, three! Oh, oh, there we go! There we go! Oh, oh, hey, there we go. Oh, Cheers, you guys, yeah, to the worst idea we've ever had. This is the yeah. best! I think it was mine. Yeah. Here's hey. to getting smashed! Here we go. All oh, day. Oh, wow! Hey, that's the worst part about this. This, this is, is not too good. good. This is too 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 good. This is too
got three shots. That was good. It's first. Sergeant Blue! Sarah! Yes! Thank God it's not me. We're all three shots in a row. Yes! I'm gonna get to you all night, sir. Help him out there. Am I at number three or number four? He's already losing track. I've already lost track. No! No! Doug and Sal are gonna treat the most! See, you need to make it less than five. There's no way. You can't do five. Five is too much. No, it's not. I just did four. He's good. Fireball's already smashed. Hey, we gotta be cool with Doug. You can't let him do that. Okay, we'll be too excited. Come on, Sergeant Blue! I've had five shots. He's had five shots I have five shots. Nominate! Oh, Woo! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Adam. Oh, man! That's right. I got five bucks. That's a good spin. I've only can use. Yeah! Yeah! Look at that. So many That's not fair. Justin has two livers. Pour some in your, your cup. Private Green. Oh, right. oh my god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gave it to yourself. I'm my own worst enemy. <laughs> He's got one life left. That's how life works, Doug. As usual. Yeah. <sighs> All drink. God. Woo! Oh shit. Doug, you're not allowed to play anymore. That wasn't a good idea. Doug, you can't play anymore. You're fucking killing me over here. I, I love you guys. I hope we survive this. We're moving yeah. too fast today. It's been, yeah, it's been a so fun long. ride. <laughs> How many is that now? Can we keep track of how many I put down? Oh, oh my god, god. Doug smashed! Oh no! I got one more idea. Doug is. Give me the, the booze, okay? Oh no! Oh my god, he's. That was all over! He's fucked over, brother! <laughs> this can't be good, dude! Hey, he just spit on the table! Every time we take a shot, we have to say Sal is sexy. <laughs> Come on, hey. man! South sexy. Of course you would. South sexy. Oh boy. Don't up my guy? Oh, bro. Oh, James! 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 Yes! Wow! Yes! Wow! Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Sal. So oh! 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 I'm sexy. I'm sexy. I'm sexy. Nominate. Damn, I go with dogs here out. Okay. Yeah. He's like, he thought about that. That's a good thing, Doug. Sal is sexy. Oh, you got another one. You should have said you should have said the second one, bro. I felt it. I didn't hear it for a second. He felt it. You meant that, though. He meant it. Let's go! Sal is sexy. Every time I love it. I love it when you guys are honest. You gotta bark like a dog before you take a shot. All drink? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Sal is so sexy. Oh, it sounds so sexy. <laughs> you jump on one leg, what? bark like a dog, and then say Sal sexy. Yeah. Wow. God. That's yeah. it. Why don't you come up with a better rule? Like they're fucking us up. Nominate! Yeah. Why, why are you telling that? It's an extra shot. Oh, you're right. I should have said Yeah. Sal is sexy. Woo! <laughs> 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 Dude, I knew the squats. I can do better squats than Ansal drunk. If you can, you do this. Look, can you do that? Yeah, I could, but I would look like you. No, no try it. <laughs> I see. I see. You're oh, doing. evolution. Oh, oh man. Oh, dude, guys, he's the worst. That's not no the old dude, down. It's all sexy. <laughs> <laughs> This is the best oh, day of my life. I was waiting for some fucking this hot is the best damn good tasters. Always. Can we choose teams? Ten squats. All right, I'm on your you team, Justin. Hey, the work is working. He's fucked. You fat fuck. <laughs> you're going to suffer. Hey, he's out of shape. He's out of shape. He's out of shape. He's out of shape. You have left, Justin. One, one more. Take, Take another shot. You forgot to jump and fuck. Oh, no. No. Or take a shot. No, I don't want to take a shot. I want to fucking no. dance. That was good, dude. Uh, lordy, lordy. 
Oh, why is that thing not spinning? Oh! Like, why is this thing not spinning like oh it used to? Why am I clapping? I'm I'm upset about this. Sounds so sexy. sexy. Sounds so sexy. The whole time. But it's really sexy. not. That's the greatest, the best rule I've ever invented. Uh, I'm so glad I said that. Oh, right. This is not a good game for forty year olds. No, normally when I go out, I'm, I'm like, hey, hey, spin. like two six. Fifty four. Doug's fifty four. Half an hour. Fifty four. Spin. Like a teenager. Spin. <laughs> what a week you. spin! What a week spin! No, I don't care, it produced what I wanted! <laughs> I feel like it counts! I feel like it counts! Of course it counts! I need to text my clients. I, 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 heard, my, I heard my hair growing. Oh, are you canceling your point? Yes, I'm going to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. The one will be fucked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey, don't get in a fight outside or something. I will. Yeah, I'm gonna do that later. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a newborn. At yes. home. <laughs> As you get older, you learn to stop before you get to this point. Where's his dicks? And you're responsible enough to not drink. He doesn't anymore. even get sleep to begin with. That's why stupid, hey, stupid young kids play games like this, bro. And I'm fucking grown ass men with fucking jobs and kids. You're so screwed. Bro, I, that so was sexy. Like, like, I don't care about your ancestors. Put it down! Drink your shot! Drink your shot! Drink it! Drink it! Drink it! Drink it! If you're interested in hormone replacement therapy, like testosterone replacement therapy, or if you're interested in peptides, if you've heard all about peptides like GLP-1, semaglutide, or terzepatide, or other peptides like BPC-157 to speed up healing and recovery and many, many more, you're going to want to go through a doctor. Now, we have partners at mphormones.com. These are doctors that will prescribe the right hormones for you and the right peptides to optimize your body, your performance help with fat loss, muscle building, libido, cognitive performance, sleep, and just your overall appearance. Go check them out. Go to mphormones.com. All right, here comes the show. First question is from Catherine89. What are the main qualities you look for in determining if a workout program is appropriate and will be effective? There are so many options online, and I'm struggling to choose one and know what's good and what's not. Well, why, this is funny to me when people message us about this stuff like that. Why? Because we have. Why, like, maps. what are you? Are you gonna, not going to sell maps right now? Yeah, I I are you not that. gonna sell like? Yeah. yeah. What, well, what, if you I, look, if and, you, are, and are you asking me about other people's programs? Like, what do you think I'm going to well, say? Well, here, here, here's what I'll say. Roast, uh, other people's. Programs. I don't know if that's is here, that the desired outcome. Here's Maybe. what I'll say because it's. I think what they're looking for are uh, qualities, as they said, or factors, or the red flags to look for, or whatever. I'll say this. Um, obviously, you listen to the show, so if you listen to us, mm -hmm. you know you, you. Hopefully, you know we know what we're talking about. So our programs are going to be good. Because we know what we're doing. Now, how would you, what kind of qualities would you look for in programs in general? Well, I'll say, are, if it's strength training, are the main compound lifts in there? Is the volume appropriate? What does volume that's appropriate look like? For most people, it's anywhere between nine sets to maybe on the very high end, 18 sets per body part per week. Um, is How does it feel? Like if you follow the program, do you feel wasted? Do you feel good? Um, is it a lot of hype? Uh, in other words, is it, is it dressed up with is themes and stuff based? like that? Yeah, but Sal, that's okay. So it's so hard. I mean, I I'm, know. this is what I'm getting from this question. It's more like I'm shopping for programs online, and I see a whole range of programs from yeah. seven dollars all the way up to two hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And how do I know, looking at them from online, what's good or not? Well, you don't. Like you're not gonna be able to determine. Well, true, they won't show you the workout. Yeah, they're not yeah. gonna. They're not gonna show you all the workouts. They're not. You're not gonna know. I mean, this is why. I mean, I don't know. This is why the future of business for most people is buying from a trusted source. It's like yes. that's where we're seeing people getting their news and information from is getting it from a trusted source, yeah. because just going in the internet and buying some random yeah. program, and it's uh, and it is a little more sophisticated than uh, it should look like this. Like it, there's more to of it. It's course. like it would be like me. Uh, trying to determine so a good software engineer uh, when I don't know how to read code. 
like and determine whether they're good or not, right? Like, yeah. well, hopefully they come from a referral from somebody else who's had them work for them and tell you that like they do great work. That's therefore, true. they probably write good code. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. Because if they showed me a piece of paper and they went like, hey, this is a software code I'm going to write for you, I'd yeah. be like, yeah. how the fuck do I determine if that's good for me or not? You know, I have I, no idea. I think I could probably generally say this, though. I'll say this. Uh, were the programs written by people who have strength and conditioning backgrounds or backgrounds in correctional exercise or backgrounds in actually working with people training and training people. people? Or is it a program from a fitness influencer that looks good or that is ripped or a celebrity? That's good. Because then it's probably yeah, crap. That's probably your your two biggest yeah. uh, you know factors when you're looking at online because like it, there's going to be a lot of influencers out there selling their look and uh, you know, their, their big following is, you know, as their, their weight and their clout. But I mean, to Adam's point, it's like, they have to be able to explain everything in nuanced detail. They have to be able to educate you constantly about, uh, whatever you're doing and going through in this program. And I just don't find a lot of programs out there that have that kind of weight attached to it. Like, uh, to, to be able to inform the consumer to a yep. degree that you feel like, wow, I have a very good grasp of what I'm getting into, what the intention is, um, you know, also their background. And I've listened to them tell me over and over again, and, and I've applied some concepts, you know, uh, on my own and realize, oh, wow, that works. And it's like, like the light bulb goes on. So uh, again, it's it's the verified person really that you're buying it from. So true and such a good point that I would even say this, that I think our programs are the best on the internet, but still suck without the podcast. Yep. Like that part of it, because, and, and we knew this, how complicated it was going to be to write this. Even with all of our science background, all of our experience, the combination of all three of us, right, and all of our expertise, putting together what we think are the best programs we possibly can. We also recognize what a massive individual variance there is that even this, are this amazing program, Maps on a Ball, could be great for this person and it may not be what's appropriate for that person yeah. and you really got to listen to the podcast to learn to figure that out for yourself to get that but, coaching that's right without the podcast that program is become subpar mm -hmm. and i still think it's the best that's on the internet so right. we, we did the best job we could of trying to think of a, a general avatar of like this is probably what is going to work really well for most people which is why random people who don't listen to the podcast could probably follow it and see better results than 90 percent of anything else out there but even then i still think it's completely incomplete without listening to the podcast and hearing us trying what a great point educate around yeah. that that's why that's so important so and if you find somebody online who you trust their their science backed they have a lot of uh, experience training people mm -hmm. And then on top of that, they're they're giving you continual conversations around exercise and nutrition. Well, shit. I mean, go for it. Try them out. Buy right. it. Maybe they maybe they're, they are going to be. Real. And there's we have friends like this. Joe yeah. DeFranco is a good example he's, that comes to mind. Great, yeah. right? Great, freaking top notch trainer, science based, tons of experience. Writes digital programs. Has a podcast. He communicates things about. Like, dude, that's a, Jordan Shallow. Yeah, yeah these are exa great yeah. great examples of other great training and coaches, but what an Instagram model who's hot and has 3 million followers and writes a program. Yeah. Okay. Go follow that one. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make, that's not, that's no. not how you want to choose. And I, I remember even uh, as a younger guy trying to figure out workout programming. I mean, the first time I found good workout programming, it was in the strength sports. It mm -hmm. was in uh powerlifting and Olympic lifting because they had to stand the test of time and people had to use them and train them. And it actually works. I, the, all the other routines were like, I mean, is there any science behind this? Is there any evidence? Or is it just, at best, this is what worked for me. Good production. And at worst, this is what's cool. Entertaining, yeah. Exactly. Hey, real quick, here's the August special. We got two programs on sale, 50% off. MAPS Bands, half off. And MAPS 40 Plus, that's also 50% off. If you want either one, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code AUGUST50 for that discount. Back to the show. Next question is from Jamil A144. What are the best hamstring hypertrophy exercises for someone who works out at home? Mm. Romanian deadlifts with a barbell yes. are not just one of the best hypertrophy exercises mm -hmm. for home workouts. They're just period, end of story, one of the best hypertrophy exercises. You can load the bar significantly with that exercise. It, it loads the hamstrings in a stretch position, which we know is really, really good for hypertrophy. It's extremely functional um, in the sense that you strength gains with that carry over quite a bit. 
into other lifts. So that's got to be one of the top ones. I do want to add a little bit of nuance, though, to that answer, which is like, <clears throat> and I think this is a problem, too, with how hypertrophy is communicated all the time. There's like, these are hypertrophy exercises. These are strength exercises. Right, 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 well, right. here's the deal. If all you did was train these five types of exercises and you do those ones all the time and you've never done single leg deadlifts or you've never done good mornings or you've never done leg curls before, the novel stimulus will actually be one of the best hypertrophy exercises you could possibly do. Right. So that variable matters, right? There's there's big bang for your buck type exercises, which you addressed and some of the ones I just gave as examples, but there's also the, the novel stimulus of your body's never done that hamstring exercise. And if you've never done that before, you're going to see hypertrophy totally. benefits from it so totally. but generally speaking right it's you know the best combination i ever found for at-home workouts actually became my favorite combination period of end of story was romanian deadlifts and then physio ball leg curls hmm. that combination right there whenever i was chasing a heavy deadlift you have to have strong hamstrings for that it it would blow up my hand i would get this yeah, this a gnarly full combo. hamstrings and, and not even super set of just i would do sets of the romanians first then i do the the, the physio ball leg curls and man, my hamstrings always got so strong and, I, and so developed from that. I I have something that's different that I didn't see coming that personally I experienced uh, was when I really worked on my squat depth. Oh, yeah. I was so surprised on the hamstring development that I got from going ass to grass squatting. That was not the desired outcome, right? I'm thinking mobility and squatting and that's where my mind is at. And one of the it's things that stretch, I, yeah, if you go deep enough, for you, sure. one of the things I noticed I got from it was, oh, wow, I got really good mm -hmm. hamstring development, not even like trying to isolate the hamstring. So, you know, and, and again, that was novel, right? I, was, I hadn't been squatting that way my whole life. I got this new and I'm loading it, right? I'm squatting three, 400 pounds. Oh, my hamstrings got growth from that, even though I wouldn't consider that a hypertrophy based yeah. thing. So you have to keep that in mind. And a little no Nordic curls. Oh God, those yeah, are gnarly. So gnarly. Yeah. Those are gnarly. They're great, but yeah, they're, they're advanced. Very advanced. advanced. You definitely That's don't want to like. Uh, you definitely don't want to miss uh, regular deadlifts, uh, stiff-legged deadlifts, and uh, good mornings as uh, oh, because yeah. all mornings. of those you can load mm -hmm. really, really good. And if those those should be like cornerstone movements. And then there's benefits to all the novel things yep. to inc incorporate in there. And if you've never yep. done it before, then and you're then and just a little uh, slightly off topic hack: if you really want to develop your hamstrings to have a nice look to your leg, and typically this is women, work them first in your workout. Hit yes. your hamstrings, then do the rest of the workout, and that prioritization tends to cause the hamstrings to really develop nicely. Next question is from Greg Martirano. When performing a unilateral exercise, is there any benefit to doing alternating reps versus one side at a time? So reps. Okay, so this would be like doing a stiff-legged, excuse me, a single-leg deadlift, going down with the left, up, then switching, down with the right, up, then switching, down with the left, up. Um, um, I typically don't alternate like legs, that. Legs, I think it makes less sense. Yeah. Yeah, just mainly because now you're like switching. It's more of a balancing exercise because mm -hmm. you want to establish stability and then just isolate and work on that one leg and like really trying to build up strength around that instability. Uh, I think that's sort of more the intention yep. versus like, you know, upper body. I think you could probably get away with more uh, alternating cadence i think that's a, a great way to think of it right so i I'm, that was always going through my head right away is like i actually think this applies really well to almost all upper body exercises that come to mind right away bench press shoulder press mm -hmm. right alternating yeah. them versus actually doing you, you would never i would never do a unilateral shoulder work and and stand, no, i shouldn't say never no, no, rarely would, ever, yeah, 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 rarely ever would i just much. press on my right side and by itself and then switch over to the other side i would alternate back and forth and i would get the benefits of unilateral training for my upper body now that's not to say you're right i would probably still once in a while do it by itself like that but my legs i would never do a single leg deadlift on the right side put everything down go to the left side put it down i would go all five to eight reps on the right side yeah. all five to eight reps on the left side you know it goes like this that the hierarchy looks like this barbell dumbbells at the same time dumbbells alternating and then one at a time because if you're doing one you don't even have a dumbbell on the other hand there's a whole different functional stability component that comes into play where now I have weight on one side. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a one, imagine doing a chest press with one side, like you got to keep yourself on the bench, not flip over versus when you hold them both uh, and alternate versus when you do them both at the same time. So there is a bit of like, okay, what am I looking for? Is it more hypertrophy? Is it more balance? Is it more stability of the core? Bodybuilders tend to do things for hypertrophy purposes. I think that's why they alternate. 
Um, but I think if you have a weakness on one side, there's a real big imbalance, focus just on that side. Because otherwise it takes my focus off. Like if I have an imbalance between my my left shoulder and my right shoulder, alternating them, it's gonna it's it's gonna mess me up a little more than if I just did my left and really focused on trying to bring out balance. You can control on the, the little side. nuances yeah. that are pulling you out of uh, alignment, you know, or like in good form. Yeah. And, and so that's that's really the consideration. If that's what you're trying to do going into the exercise, then you got to isolate that. And that being on all the points that we made, it's also true that if you did, it's not bad. No. You know, no. it's not bad or it's not like it's ineffective or ineffective, yeah. right? Like you, it's, yeah. it's you just could, us working through those Yeah, ideas. you could do it. I think the points that we're making is like, ah, oh, there's a reason why I would prefer to do it on one side because I love that when you do a single leg exercise like that, five to eight reps on one side, the core and stability component yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. you do, you lose that if you you put it down right constantly away. Constantly switch. Yeah, hey, you constantly switch. You lose that great core and stability component. Like you get a lot less of it than you would be taking breaks in between. But it doesn't mean that there's not any value That's of you right. doing that other way. Yeah, they're both okay. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out.